I cannot believe it, but this is the 50th episode of Bumper to Bumper. And because it is such a huge milestone, we went and got the tiniest car that we could find. This super weird little K car was a total sales flop when it should have been, in my opinion, a big success. So what happened? Well, today we have one of the raddest and the rarest of the Japanese market K cars. I'm gonna tell you how it came to be. Then we're gonna dive into the car to show you what makes it so unique and why I love it so much. And at the end, you already know that I'm gonna see how funny I look inside of it. Today we're going bumper to bumper on this AutoZam AZ1. A. Z one. Thanks so much to this episode's sponsor, Audible. Hey, are you like me? Do you like listening to words instead of looking at them? Well, Audible has a ton of audiobooks and other word-based audio entertainment from virtually every category. Audible members can pick three titles a month, one audiobook, and two exclusive Audible originals. You can download them to any kind of smartphone or tablet so you can listen to your words everywhere and keep them forever. If you sign up for Audible now and you finish three audiobooks by March 3rd, you'll automatically get a $20 Amazon credit. I'm starting off with Tiny House Living because after I get all excited about a car I can barely fit inside, I'm gonna want a home that I can barely fit inside. I can't wait to listen to my next audiobook curled up in the fetal position in both of them. Start listening right now with a 30-day Audible trial. Choose one audiobook and two Audible originals absolutely free. Visit audible.com slash bumper to bumper or text bumper to bumper to 500-500. Now before I get up close and personal with this AZ1, let me tell you a little bit about where it came from and what things were like when it arrived on the scene. Tiny cars like this originally came about as a way to get people into affordable cars after Dub Dub 2. The Japanese government created a new light vehicle segment called K Cars. In 1990, the maximum length was set at 11.2 feet and a max engine size at 660 cc's. Now that's really small, okay you guys? You know what else was going on around in 1990? The golden age of Japanese supercars. Freaking Skylines, Sylvia's, basically every car that you little D-holes love. And it was that atmosphere that also gave us a trio of fun-sized, sporty little K cars that came to be known as the ABC K cars. The AutoZam AZ1, the Honda Beat, and the Suzuki Cappuccino. AutoZam was a sub-brand of Mazda that sold the company smaller, more affordable cars, kind of like Scion and Toyota here in the States. And the AZ1 is the wildest of the ABC bunch. Now they developed three different concepts for the 1989 Tokyo Motor Show to see which one the public liked best. Type A was an exotic looking coupe with gold wing doors and pop up up and down headlights. Type B was a weird shaped coupe with boring regular not even gold wing doors and a really tall greenhouse. And the Type C Looked like a straight up miniature Group C prototype race car and it had fender mirrors and numbers on the doors. But naturally, the guys in the suits didn't give us the little tiny race car. And in the end, they killed its pop-up headlights because they were like, I guess it makes it safer. You know what's not safe, but very cool? Samurai swords, hang gliders, pop up, up and down headlights. Another thing that is very cool are these side vents. They're fully functional. This one's got an intake behind it, and on the other side, there's one that matches it that goes to the intercooler. Sick. Standard AZ1s only came in two colors, classic red and Siberia blue with gray body cladding. Later on, there were special editions that added black, silver, and white naturally there was a Mazda Speed one too, which ditched the gray bits for a color matched body kit. Ashley added a blue Mazda Speed body kit to her AZ1, along with some absolutely freaking massive Bridgestone Super Wrap wheels. 
You might think that they're just steelies, but if you think that, then you're wrong. These things are made out of freaking magnesium. That's sick, that's like a race car. If you see an AZ-1 parked or even driving with these sick doors up, you cannot help but love it. We had a donut meet a few months ago. We literally had so many cool cars in a parking lot, but it was an AZ-1 that everyone was talking about. People love them. It's cute yet exotic at the same time, you know, like, like an iguana. Honestly, guys, look. What the heck, let's throw another name into the mix. Suzuki played a big part in the development of the AZ-1. They gave the idea for the car and an engine to Mazda, who took those two things and ran with them. Behind the tiny seats is a transversely mounted 657cc turbocharged three-cylinder engine making 64 incy weensy little baby hearsbirds and 63 pound-feet of torque, which is the maximum amount allowed in a K car. So yes, 64 horsepower isn't very much, but the turbo spools up and the engine revs all the way to 9,000 RPM just right behind your freaking head. Now this car has a Fujitsubo exhaust that probably adds a few extra horsepowers, but zero to 60 still takes about 10 seconds. Now with a curb weight of only 1,587 pounds, its power to weight ratio is about half of a Mazda Miata. So it's not actually that fast. But as Colin Chapman proved, lightness goes a long way towards making cars fun. Because when a car is light, it feels fast. Ashley actually drove it on several tracks in Japan and Laguna Seco, and her and the car were back here living in the States. So there is a downside to having a car this small. It doesn't have a trunk. Oh, it must have a frunk, right? No! Wrong, it's full of horns and a spare tire. So if you wanna bring literally anything with you, you can't have a passenger in the car. You wanna go on a weekend road trip with your boo? I said forget about a cuff. Okay, now it's time for the funniest part of the episode. I know, there's been a lot of funny parts, but this is the funniest. Let's put me inside of this little car. <laughs> well, I'm in. Um, I guess you could say that it's a little bit small for me. Just thinking about a typical boring K car, you might expect to find a dinky little three-speed automatic or something like a four-speed manual in this car, but nope. It's got a freaking five-speed, just like the rest of the JDM legends from the 90s. This car has a Defi water pump and boost gauges. You know, cause turbo. Speaking of turbo, it's got an HKS turbo timer and a factory optional Momo steering wheel, just like a Subaru. The little side windows, are operated with manual cranks, which is kind of hard to do. And it only takes two turns to get them down because they're so small, which is not a problem because this car came with AC. So you don't even need the outside air. You're set. Now it's time for my favorite part. We get to hear what a turbocharged 650cc three cylinder sounds like, shall we? Sounds good. I've never heard a car that sounds like this. Here's the thing. On paper, the AZ-1 should have been a sales slam dunk, all right? It's mid-engine, rear wheel drive. Have I mentioned that it has gold wing doors? And it was marketed as the ultimate handling machine. What more could someone want? 
Production ended in 1994 with only 4,392 AZ-1s made and another 531 rebadged and sold as the Suzuki Kara. AZ-1 was just too silly to survive a bad economy. I mean, where are you gonna put your groceries, you know? The going doors, the vents, the turbo, the freaking handling. There's just so much to love about this tiny little Japanese slow supercar, regardless of the fact that it wasn't a commercial success. But there's a few thousand out there. And now that they're 25 years old, you can legally import them to the States and register them to drive on the streets if you're brave. Again, this is our 50th episode. I wanna thank you guys so much from the bottom of my heart and on behalf of everyone else at Donut, especially the bumper to bumper crew. We got Christina, we got Felipe, we got a bunch of guys who make it look really good. Max and Graham, our editors, all of our writers, and also all the dudes who stepped in to host when I couldn't, Felipe, Job, and Nolan. It takes a village uh, and it's team effort and this is Awesome. If you want to see more pictures of this car, follow Ashley, the owner, on Instagram at Ashley Meesh. Follow me on Instagram at James Pumphrey. If you want some behind the scenes stuff, follow Donut on Twitter and Instagram. We also have a new channel called Donut Podcast, which is 100% dedicated to long form content. I love this show and I love you guys. Love you. Bye.